There's no more purpose for my lungs because I'm not breathing. If I thought that I was still alive, then I think I was dreaming. I just left the earth. My soul escaped my body now. I'm dead. And I'm rising into the heavens to find out what lies ahead. This life is over. And my time is done on earth. There's no more stressing. I'm about to meet the one that gave me all my life and blessings. Now it's time to hear his voice. And it's time to feel his embrace. And it's that time to meet my God. And now it's time to see his face. I'm at the gate. And I don't want to wait. I want to see my savior. I'm going to feel his presence. Have his safety and baby. In his favor, wait. They open up the gates and sunlight dances through the entrance. If I was alive, I'd pass out from the beauty of his presence. I can sense him all around me, I can feel him every place. He's here, I feel it, but that's not enough. I want to see his face. They close the gate as I walk in. Now, any memories are useless, any earthly love is worthless because no other can produce this. So much color, so much light. Life and wind and sun and love and music, so much happiness. God loves us in this paradise, can prove it. Uh, where's he at, though? I just want to see his face. I'll be around it. And I'm walking on the streets of gold, but I ain't getting my memories are useless. I feel something. I turn around and I catch eyes with his. And I've never seen him before, but I still know who it is. Right now, I'm face to face with Jesus, looking God right in the eye. Immediately I bowed, and if I was alive, I would have cried. Now God was always right beside me, but I see him. I can touch him. I'll exhort him. I'm going to praise and magnify him because I love him. And I tell him, you're my king. This happiness cannot be doubled. You're my rock, my life, my ever-present help in times of trouble. And I love you. God, I love you. For eternity, I show you. But he looks me in the eye, and then he whispers, do I know you? in church every service but he tells me church without applying what you learned is worthless <laughs> but I was a choir member I praised you with poems and acting but he says he checked the book of life and that my name was Axon and I'm laughing like there must be a mistake I just won't hear it then he says I praised him but I didn't have him in my spirit I can't bear it little thought I gave you praise wholeheartedly Concluder, that's why in real life it won't be. But don't let this be your future. You may go to church, but man, you gotta live it. Don't be two faced, don't be hypocrites, guys. Don't be dogs and ladies, don't be loose days. We ain't got no time, so right now, drop the games and lift your hands and let them in before it ends. Let's praise them while we had the chance. Heavenly Father, we come right now in the name of the Lord Christ Jesus and ask that you would be with us, Lord God, the speaker and the hearer of your word. Father, that you would bless us, keep us, guide us, and protect us, Lord God, that we could get on the narrow path, Lord God, that leads, you know, to salvation and not the wide path that leads to the gate of destruction, Lord God. Um, and in that poem was something very powerful and um, meaningful, Lord God, to each and every one of us as we consider our walk with you, Lord God. Are we actually uh, being the church or are we playing church? Have we decided to follow Jesus or are we still following the things of man <clears throat> just in a different place? So God, as we uh, get ready to conclude spiritual warfare, let us prepare our hearts and minds for what's next that we may walk, talk, Live, breathe, and speak your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so <clears throat> in that poem was a powerful message. Uh, the young man um, had died, and, and, uh, and he had went in up into heaven, and he saw the pearly gates, and he walked the streets of gold, and he looked for the Savior, and he was trying to find he was trying to find Jesus. And as he traveled around, 
uh, he was wondering why he was all alone and where was his crown and why hadn't the heavens opened up <clears throat> and rejoiced. And in that, he found that when he confronted the Lord, Jesus said, uh, depart from me, I never knew you. Um, if you can, uh, Reverend Sally Clark, uh, put this on in the name of the poem on uh, uh, the feed so that people can listen to it and listen to it again. Um, if I had the time tonight, I would do it again right now. But, the, but I want you to get it. I want you to understand it because in that is such a powerful uh, message of what's going on today um, in, 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 in the church. That we play church and, and we, we uh, want to be on stage and uh, worship and we want to preach from the pulpit. And, you know, but uh, we are supposed to be the hands and the feet of Christ Jesus. And the reason why I've done this Victoria Spiritual Warfare class um, communication conversation is because if you're not victorious, then uh, you, won't, you can't help anybody else. Only when you're victorious. If you're still going forward uh, to to get prayer for for repentance, shame, trauma, healing, you know, if you're not if you're not if, behave, if you're not walking in in the promises of God, even if you're in a wheelchair, if you're not rolling in the if you're not moving, however it is that you can move in the things of God, if you're not if you're not proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ, then then I'm certain that you will find yourself at the last call um, as a trumpet sound um, asking Jesus, uh, where is my name in the book of life? And I'm afraid that if you don't get this now, that your name will not be found in the Lamb's book of life. And I don't want to be the pastor or the teacher that tells you that your behavior and that your actions that don't honor God are okay, and 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 I also don't want to indicate that it's your fault. There's an enemy of God, and you're you're the um, prize, and you're the pride and joy of God Almighty. And Satan wants to steal you from your identity in Christ Jesus. The very thing that He died on the cross for was that you could be redeemed to the Father. And your identity could be restored. And Satan's only objective is to inhibit you from that glorious day when the dead will rise in Christ first and then the living and will be caught up in an instant. What a glorious day that will be if you're on the right side of victory, spiritual warfare. All right, so I'm on page 30 in the spiritual warfare manual. And I know that can't be right. So let's go to You're 87. 85 at F. 85 at F. Don't go there yet because there's some housekeeping that I need to do. There's some things that I need to discuss. Um, uh, Reverend, Rep, uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a ministry called Women on Fire. <clears throat> and they will be meeting at Josiah Center on the 7th sometime after... Um, Three o'clock. I'm not sure what exact the time is. Reverend Sally's supposed to get with uh, the pastor and, and get a the actual nail down time. There's a lot going on in the building that day, so I'm going to assume that that's being done. But it'll be on notification. It's not until the 7th of March. I want you to know that it's going to be a powerful testimony. I believe there may be um, uh, her. Reverend Sally Clark's testimony. I don't know who, what other guest speakers they may have. I'm not sure the details because I'm not a privy to them. But if there's going to be uh, snacks or food or uh, whatever. But I know that it's going to be a wonderful time um, where women get together and light the fire under one another to advance the kingdom of God. They do open it up for men now. It's not just for women. but Yeah, so she says it's open to men also, um, if your husband needs to bring you, he can stay. <laughs> right. So if your husband, you heard her, if, if your husband's interested in a Women on Fire group, amen, and um, I won't be there. Amen? That, because Women on Fire 
you know, it's important for women, and it's open to men also. I don't know what that means. Um, if you want to know more about it, I would strongly suggest that you uh, text or message Reverend Sally, um, however that looks, either now or later at another time, maybe more appropriate, I don't know, and, and um, what it's going to look like to get on board. All right, that's my little spiel. So, there's, there's a, a, there's an idea and a concept evidently that I didn't realize, or maybe just didn't care, that there's, uh, there's been some um, opinions as it pertains to Reverend Sally and I, and perceptions. Um, I, I was aware and didn't care. Uh, Reverend Sally may be aware and care, I'm not sure. Uh, you have to ask her. But uh, Pastor Dave Carlson has seen it as a hindrance for what he believes the call on my life is. And, 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 and I'm, st I'm standing down under Pastor Dave Carlson and Josiah Center at, in this time and season, for this time and season. So um, I call him pastor, and I, honor, I give honor where honors do. And um, he, 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 I put it online, he spoke into our life, and he said that it's going to fall. It's going to fall off. I'll be surprised because it's been attached to me the entire time I've been in full-time ministry since 1991. Um, I don't talk about the Trinity. I talk about unity, um, that the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are one in unity, that we are one in unity with the Spirit and the Father and the Son. Um, water baptism is submerging. I don't talk about um, sprinkling babies and stuff. I'll dedicate your baby to, to God. That's not baptism. Um, I don't know, christening, whatever you want to call it, dedication. And I believe that it, the baby is supposed to be dedicated eight days after it's born to the Lord. That's a Jewish custom that um, you can you can honor or not honor. Um, but I do think that your children should be dedicated to God. And then you should raise them up in the ways of the Lord. And when they are older, they will not depart from it. So, um, here's the deal. Whenever I go to rivers, waters of life, rivers of life, Antioch Christian Center, um, way of the Lord, spirit of the Lord. When I travel with Promise Keepers, work at TVN. Wherever I go, I stand down under the vision of the man and woman of God, husband and wife usually, and stand down under their vision and try to facilitate um, help facilitate their vision. I actually am trying to help them advance what the call of God is on their ministry and on, and on, on, on them. And it, it has nothing to do with me. It's not for me. I don't need any recognition or, or honor or glory or, or praise or nothing. Um, it's, it's what I do. And as a man sows, he shall also reap. And then when I am in full-time ministry and I, my church buildings are up and running and my homes are being distributed and business are grow, businesses are growing, then um, God sends people that, that come alongside of me. There was a worship team that came alongside Thy Kingdom Come World Ministries. And, um, and there's another worship team that came alongside of, of um, Broken Wall Ranch Ministries. There was another worship team called Wisdom, a um, powerful worship team in Minneapolis that came alongside the evangelism that we did. They just unloaded their van full of worship music, guitars, sound systems, microphones, tambourines, drums. And for seven to ten days, they played every day at the, at the street revival that we had there. So as a man sows, he shall also reap. 
I sow honor and I reap honor. I sow reverence, I reap reverence. I sow financially, I reap financially. Um, and so there's that. If I'm offensive, it's because I'm meant to be. I purpose to be abrasive. I made up my mind a long time ago that people weren't going to like me anyways. Because I read the Bible. Jesus said they persecuted me, they're going to persecute you. If they crucify me, they're going to crucify you. you know, I read the Bible. That's the problem. I read the Bible. So I never expected to have, be invited to dinner over to people's houses and stuff. I just never did. I never expected that I was going to be, um, you know, sent on vacation to the Bahamas somewhere by some by the by the ministerium. I never, I, ne I just never did. And and I made it a point in my in my pastoral and and and, and, and ministry career, you know, to send husbands and wives to retreats. I made up my mind that I was going to send them to to fine dining experiences. And, and get them into places where they can uh, have uh, massage therapies and facials and you know because because that's what I do but I never expected that I never thought that that would come back to me even though I sewed it because I made up my mind long time ago that I would never say or do anything to compromise the word of God and when people do things for you they tend to want you to compromise um, they want you to, um, what is, water down or look away, uh, you know, from that. Sometimes I get thirty, sixty, sometimes $100,000. And a lot of times there was things attached to that money. You know, well, you know, I'm still involved in, in pornography. I, you know, I still, you know, and, and I understand that there's a sin nature, but I'm not going to overlook it or give you a pass. Because you wrote a check for eighty thousand dollars to Thy Kingdom Come World Ministries, I just was never that kind of guy. And I remember before I went to prison this last time, they said if you would just say what you did was wrong and you'll never do it again, we'll give you a minimum sentence and you you'll be out of prison in less than a year. Or, or, or you know, or and if you don't, if you just if you keep saying that that's you know, I said look, that's what God told me to do. That's what my bishop told me to do. That's what the Word of God told me to do. That's what the Holy Spirit told me to do. I did it. I'm not sorry. I'm not going to repent. And I will do it again and have. And then they said, all right, then we're going to give you 15 years. Actually, they said 24 years, but they didn't give me 24 years, but 15 years. So we're going to give you this sentence. We're going to give you this um, elongated sentence because you won't say that, that because it's not wrong. Listen, it's my life. All right? And, and I'm going to live it according to the word and the will of God. And I'm not going to be dictated to, threatened, manipulated, coerced into being something else. A uh, very nice young lady told me the other day, she said, you're just a teddy bear. You're just so, you can be so gentle. I guess she didn't see the blood under my fingernails and the meat between my teeth. I'm, I'm, I'm a lion. And if I'm a bear at all, it's a grizzly. I eat demons for breakfast. I do. You know how some people like Cocoa Puffs? And some people like Lucky Charms? And some people like Frosted Flakes? I eat demons for breakfast. Chew them up and spit them out. By the time my feet hit the floor, I've been engaged in spiritual warfare for approximately 35 to 50 minutes. Before my feet hit the floor. And then I'm in a relationship with Reverend Sally. Who understands spiritual warfare. So. We're kicking them out of the house. Out of people's lives. We're taking authority over them. In people's churches. In their buildings. We've gotten passes and permission. To speak against things. In different churches around the state. I'm going to St. Cloud tomorrow. Uh, people say, well, you know, Pastor Danny, people just are offended by you. They don't like you. 
I always say good because I don't like them either. So we're all happy. And, and it's not my goal to be your friend or your buddy, you know, or hang. My obligation, responsibility is to give you the proper tools to defeat the enemy that's trying to defeat you. And it's not even for you that I do that. I know that makes people sad. Well, he's so nice, I think he likes me. No, I don't. <clears throat> no, I don't. I'm in love with Jesus. And Jesus is in love with you. I'm sorry that it sounds or, or harsh or unattentive or uncompassionate. I'm in love with Jesus. And it just so happens that Jesus is in love with you. So that motivates me to minister to people that quite frankly, I'm not even very fond of. You know, I spent a day on the streets and it was seven degrees below zero. I had to buy two new sweatshirts because my sweatshirts, got, I gave them to other people because they were cold. Did you notice this was a new sweatshirt? That one right there is? Yeah. <laughs> I thought see, it was your old one. See this? Yeah, see it looks a lot cleaner, a lot nicer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not bragging. I'm just saying that I would take the shirt off my back for somebody who I don't know and don't like. And if I just, the reason why I make up my mind not to, not to do this for people that I like, because then I would be limited to the type of ministry that I would be engaged in. Like, there's people that I know love me and like me on the Facebook uh, live feed and in real life and in time, and I got kids, you know, and I'm well, Dad, what about us? What about you? And then Jesus was asked that very question. Jesus, uh, your mother and your sisters and your brothers are outside. Uh, they want to see you. And Jesus said, who is my mother and my brothers? But those who do the will of my father. I have to have that mentality. If I had my way about it, I promise and guarantee you, I would live in Oklahoma in a condo somewhere where I would be 8 to 10 miles away from my son and I would I would uh, watch him raise his kids and do tricks on a on a, a boogie board in the on the back of his boat. I just spend all day on shore or on a pontoon or on a boat watching my son navigate his way through life, throwing him nuggets. I I just would, I would. But I'm called of God. He appealed to me to advance the kingdom, and I said I would go. And he said, it's going to be dangerous. You're going to lose your life. You're going to be imprisoned. You're going to lose your finances. And people that you love are going to leave you for the gospel. You already know what I said, right? What did I say, Reverend? I said, okay. I said, okay. When Jesus said, will you lay down your life? I said, yeah. He said, will you give up the desires? I said, yeah. He said, will you, will you give up your financial stability and security? I said, yeah. He said, will you go to prison for me? I said, yes. He said, will you go into the lion's den? I said, yes. He said, will you go into the furnace? I said, yes. He said, will you lay your head down on a, on a wood slab and let them sever your head from your body? I said, yes. Those are the easy things. He said, will you love the unlovable? Yes. Will you hold the homosexual? Yes. Will you minister to the wayward, the downtrodden, the hungry and the homeless? I said, yes. He never promised me a Joel Olstein. T.D. Jakes ministry. He, he never did. He never, he, he never did say that, you know, I'll, I'm going to bless you beyond your wildest imaginations. You're going to have cars, clothes, and jewelries that you, will, that you can't even imagine. You're going to have a 52-room mansion, and there's going to be maids and servants and gardeners running around. 
And Reverend Sally is going to lay in a hot bathtub full of anointing oils waiting to, for you to come home as she is anointed with frankincense and myrrh like Esther. He didn't. He never said that. I think that he said that to Dr. Frederick K.C. Price. I think he said that to Cleflo Dollar. I think he's. I think he said that to T.D. Jakes. I think he did, and I'm not mad that he did because he gives each person a, a a a burden. And don't you know that some of that is a burden? Some of what they do you know that Reverend? Some of what they have is a burden. I've got kind of a simple life. The biggest problem I have at at my house is the deer keep eating grain and seeds out of the bird feeders. That's the biggest problem I have. <laughs> The heat's always on, the lights are always on, the water always runs, the toilet always flushes. I got six rolls of toilet paper on a, on a stand, and I'm pretty sure that that's going to last me at least two or three days. So whatever, whatever, place, whatever place God calls you, if he's, if, if he's called you to minister to your grandson... If he's if his if his if his if, if he gave you a heart for your kids, if he's giving you a, a a passion for alcoholics, if he's giving you a ministry for the homosexual, if he's giving you a, a a wealth base to sow into ministries, do that. Whatever he's giving you to do, do that. My only purpose and goal is to win lost souls for the kingdom of God and to advance the kingdom according. To what he's given me to do. That's it. So nobody has to like it. Tawanda don't got to like it. Karen don't got to like it. Becky ain't got to like it. Jim ain't got to like it. Jack ain't got to like it. Tom ain't got to like it. Listen. To the best of my knowledge, you was never going to like me anyways. So I might as well satisfy and please my Father, which is in heaven. Amen. Because hearing him saying, well done, good, uh, good and faithful servant, that's my reward. And, 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 the and, the, and the path that leads to heaven doesn't go through your living room or through your yard. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? Yes. The path that leads... To hell and destruction. Don't go through your living room or through your yard. Did you know that? There's nothing you can do or say that will get me to heaven or to hell. Nothing. Not a damn thing that you can say or do that will advance me in the kingdom or deny me the kingdom. Because I'm not your servant. Right now, I'm standing down under Pastor Dave Carlson. He can tell me what to do, and I will listen. When I was standing down under Bishop Charles Messenger, he told me you got an hour and 17 minutes to get to the cities. Guess how far I lived from the cities? Three hours. Three hours. You got an hour and 15 minutes to be in my office. Guess where I was in an hour and 15 minutes? In his office. In his office? You know why? Because I'd rather do what my bishop says than follow the speed limit. Chuck Bauer was my assistant pastor. His son was married to my daughter. My granddaughter, technically, but I raised her, so I called her my daughter, and she called me dad. Aww. He was the father of my great-grandson, Israel, um, Izzy, for short. His dad came to my office and said, my son is in a, is in a drug house, and they're cooking methamphetamine and selling 
crack cocaine and marijuana, and they're extorting him, and my wife keeps giving them checks and money and cash to not hurt him. And this has been going on for weeks, maybe a month. He had called the police department. He had called the sheriff's department. And they hadn't done anything about it. So then I called, and I said, if you don't go get him, I will. That was on Wednesday. By Friday, I had kicked in the door, put everybody in there on the ground, got my grandson-in-law by the hair and bounced his ass out of that house and got him to a drug treatment program and protected his dad and his mom and everybody else that was with me. And I went and did my sentence at a state penitentiary for doing that. Guess who sent me money from ministry? Nobody. Guess, guess who wrote me letters from the church? Nobody. Get, guess who showed up on visiting day from the seven ministries that I am affiliated with in EWEMI, World Ministries, under me. None of them. I'm not complaining, but the same people were at my cross that were at Jesus' cross. The same people were at my trial that were at Jesus' trial. The same people showed up for me that showed up for Jesus. So I love you, Pastor Dave Carlson, but you might want to know that this is my calling. I am going to always be under on a demonic attack from a spiritual enemy that wants to kill, steal, and destroy because I bring people to a place to where they can be victorious over him. And I remember the DA in the police department saying in, in Big Stone County at my trial, if we can get that nigger out of here, the ministry will close. You know what they said about Jesus? If we can get that nigger to the cross, his ministry will fold. <sighs> Love you, Pastor Dave Carlson. I'm going to submit to his authority. And um, if he stands me down, I'm going to stand down. If he, if he, if he gives me a, 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 a mandate, I'm going, to, I'm going to fulfill that mandate. But I promise you, worship leader, I promise you, uh, AV team, I promise you, a worship team, I promise you, volunteers, I listen to one voice in that building. One. And you would think it would be God's, right? Here's how I honor God. Guess how I'll tell him how I honor God, brother. By listening to Pastor Dave Carlson. All right, is that enough? Did that clean up this last week? I believe so, yeah. All right, that was housekeeping. Love you. Welcome to Thy Kingdom Come World Ministries Facebook Victorious Spiritual Warfare! Ah. Can I share something really beautiful with you? It's short. Are you got your clothes on? <laughs> Little Eli, Mighty Man OG. Yeah, yeah. He got it. He got a new cross necklace. Yeah. And he dropped it on the ground. Yeah. And he said, he, he picked it up and kissed it. And he said, sorry, God. Sorry, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm Triple OG. Eli's little G, little OG. That's my little old man of God. So, but listen, I love him and, 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 and he is powerful. And by the way, Johnny is a powerful man of God also because you couldn't have Eli fall from that tree Unless Johnny has something powerful in him. Does that make sense? Yes. Fruit doesn't fall too far from the tree. Right. All right. All right, I'm going to go to the spiritual warfare.
I have some scriptures to read, but I'm going to let that go tonight because I need to get the spiritual warfare over because Reverend is going to do her testimony as soon as I get done. So the sooner I get done, the better. This is my gift to Josiah Center. I already got him a basketball hoop. I'm going to set this in plain view for everyone to see when they come in the door. You see what that is? Tell me when you can see it on the screen. And just tilt it forward just a little bit. Yeah. Um, can you see it? I'm not going to worry about it. Don't worry about yeah. it. So, you can't see it too bad. Uh, this is going to be at Josiah Center. It's uh, young David who had been anointed king and he hadn't become king yet. And that's him killing uh, Goliath. And that I like to think of me as the, the dragon slayer and the giant killer. Right? So this is offensive to women and candy ass men. Right here, hoorah. When 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 you say there's a fight, I'm just trying to figure out which side I'm gonna be on. Do you know that sometimes I see a fight and I don't even pick a side? I just start socking people, and when then people are gone, I'll start socking the other people. It don't matter to me what side of the fight. I don't care. If you say fight, I'm coming. Alright, so this is cool and this is powerful. And it's going to Josiah Center. And we're going to have a men's group. And we're going to have a man, a, man, a man's cave. I, I, got that, I got that from the Holy Spirit. That that's going to happen. <laughs> right? Alright. This is going there. So, Ruby, thank you. Who, is, who should I thank, Vance? Ruby. Thank you, Ruby. That's going to Josiah Center. I'm going to dedicate that. All right, let's go to the let's go to this because we got to get back to the to the principles because I'm almost done. This right here is who you are in Christ. I'm going to read them for those of you who didn't learn how to read. John 1:12, I am God's child. John 15, I am Christ's friend. Romans 5, I have been justified. First Corinth. I am united with the Lord, and I am one spirit with him. you got to get this, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, friends and fans. I am united with Christ, and I am one spirit with him. You are one spirit with God through Jesus Christ. You are exactly like Jesus, as much as Jesus, because the spirit of God lives in you, just like. The Spirit of God lived in Jesus. You're not going to hear that anyplace else except maybe Josiah Center. I shouldn't even say maybe. Except Josiah Center. I'm telling you that when you look at me, you are looking at the perfected, finished work of God. I am a joint heir with Jesus Christ Almighty, and everything that was available to him is available to me. How do you like apples? <laughs> no, I said it wrong, Lori. You like apples? How do you like them apples? How do you like them apples? I have been bought with a price. So, like, like you used to be able to own black people back in the eighteen, back, back in the slave days, because you buy them and then you own them. In First Corinthians says, "I have been bought with a price. I belong to God. How did I? Who paid for me to belong to God?" Jesus, Jesus, what did he pay? What did he pay with? His life. His blood. blood. Says by his blood I've been redeemed for the Father. Ephesians, I am a saint. Did you know you were looking at a saint? Everybody, take a minute and stand up, go into the bathroom and look in the mirror, and then come back. I'm going to give you a minute. Some people got bathrooms upstairs. I'm going to wait another minute.
All right, just look in whatever mirror you have available to you or in the window. Who do you see when you look in the mirror? Jesus. Will you do me a favor? Yes. Could you put this back in the refrigerator and put your hand? I just put those in there. Oh, you Can need you? a colder one. Yeah. Them aspartame drinks aren't very good when they're not cold, cold. That one wasn't warm, but it wasn't cold, cold, so I could taste aspartame. All right. When you looked in the mirror, when you when you looked in the mirror, what did you what did you see? You guess who you should have saw. You should have saw Jesus. That's who you should have saw because you are the image of Christ. And Christ is the exact image, is, thank you, is the exact image of God. Amen? I am a saint, and so are you. I have been adopted as God's child. So I am as much a child of God as Jesus is the Son of God. I am a Son of God. Just as much as I am a Son of God, you are a son or daughter of God. Just as much as Jesus is. I have been redeemed. What does redeemed mean? Who knows what the word redeemed means? I don't know, Pastor Daddy. I didn't take that class. Okay. Redeemed means bought back with a price. That's what it says in First Corinth. I have been bought with a price. Redeemed means bought with a price. Bought back. And forgiven of all your sins. If you've been forgiven of all your sins, how many sins do you have? That you have to pay for. None. Isn't this a trick question? This is a trick question, man. <laughs> I'm going to be tricky dicky all night long. <laughs> if you've been forgiven of all your sins, which sins will you be held accountable for when you stand before the throne of God? None. I don't know, Pastor Daddy. I don't know. Bambi, what you talking about, Willis? Bambi said none. Thank you, Bambi. None. None. When God sees you, he sees you through the blood of Jesus, and you are the perfected, finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Now, that is not a license to pornography, uh, homosexuality, idolatry, idolatry. Um, that's not a pass. What that is, though, is the truth. You are the perfect, finished work of Jesus Christ. And when God sees you, he does not see your sin. He sees his son's blood covering you, forgiving you of your sin. Everybody wonders what Jesus meant when he said, Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Guess what he meant? Who knows what he meant? I'm not going to yell at the camera tonight. He meant forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. <laughs> All right, so I, I yell. All right, I am free forever from condemnation. There is no more condemnation for those of you who are in Christ Jesus. If you're born again, saved by grace through faith, you are. this is you on this card. If you are not, Johnny, born again, saved by grace through faith, then pray with your son, because he will lead you in a sinner's prayer to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Talk about, can you talk about a more beautiful environment than... Then Eli praying with his dad. So can you can you imagine anything more? No. That's like a Lassie show or or uh, one of them tearjerker. Or, yes. Wouldn't that be a tearjerker? Yes. Eli praying with his dad. It would be the most beautiful picture ever put on the wall. Oh my goodness! You guys get that? Make that happen. Or I'll come up there. I don't care which. I have been established, anointed, and sealed by God. That's you. I, 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 I. All them I am's is me, and all them I am's is you. I am hidden with Christ in God. I am confident that the good work that has been begun in me will be perfected. I am a citizen of heaven. I'm not even a citizen of Minnesota or the citizen of the United States. I don't give a shit about the United States or Minnesota. I am just a bypasser a transient on this earth. My home 
is in the heavenlies. And the heavenlies home is guess is where? Guess where? Guess. Guess. Bet you can't guess. In me. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in this earth as it is in heaven. It's being done through me as we speak, by the way. Philippians 3.20, I am a citizen of heaven. 2 Timothy 1.7, I have not been given a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. I have not been given a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. You need to memorize 2 Timothy 1.7. Hebrews 4.16, I can find grace and mercy in time of need. That might be important for you because there's going to be some time of need coming up here real quick. I know that I prayed with David and David and Leah. I said, you're going to have an insurance policy. Hey, did them flowers just open up? The big Look at how big that one is. Mm -hmm. They might open it up as we speak, huh? Yep. Those yep. were all pods when I, when I came here. Yep, those are um... flowers. Well, they're lilies, but I, Anastasia lilies or something. I can't remember. Anastasia? Is that for like when you get your teeth fixed? <laughs> no. Oh. Okay. Anastasia. I am filled with grace and mercy in time of need. You might want that. I am born of God, and the evil one cannot touch me. I'm going to tell you something. The Victoria Spiritual Warfare, I'm going to teach you how the devil not only cannot touch you, but he can't even win an argument or a suggestion. He never could touch you. If you're born again, he can't touch you anyways. But what happens is, is he, he pretends like he can. He talks like he can and acts like he can. And the truth is, is he, is he can't. All right, ready? I am the salt and the light of the earth. L listen, listen, all you haters in those churches that I'd be visiting and, 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 and bringing messages in. Listen, le listen, Linda, 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 listen, honey, listen. You're not listening, Linda. Linda, you're not listening. <laughs> listen, I am the, I am the salt and the light of the earth. You like apples? How you like them caramel apples right there? I just want a caramel apple right now all of a sudden. <laughs> I am the light and salt of the earth. Who are you? I'm not talking about, I'm not talking to you guys. I'm talking to other guys that are listed in, but they're not you guys. I have been chosen and appointed to bear fruit. I'm bearing fruit. I'm laying eggs in the nest that God provided for you that you refuse to lay eggs in and that you refuse to produce fruit in. Do they understand that, what I just said? Listen, God is in Pine City, Rush City, North Branch, um, Willow River, all the way up to Red Wing, Hastings, uh, 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 Blaine. God has given you a place to produce fruit. Do you know why I'm producing fruit in a place that God gave you to produce fruit? Guess why? Who knows why? Because you're a willing vessel. Because I'm a willing vessel. If I'm doing it where you live, it's because you didn't want to do it. You didn't do it. Okay? That's the past. This is the present. So now what should you do? Like, like my son, Dylan. I used to solve his problems. Guess who solves his problems now? He does. Guess when he started solving his problems? Yes. Who knows? That family knows. Who knows when, when my son started solving his own problems? My other son, he's still not solving his own problems. His mama's still solving his problems. Guess who? Guess why my other son... Guess when he started solving his own problems? Who knows? Anybody say? When I stop solving his problems? Guess when I'll stop producing fruit in your neighborhood? Guess when? Guess, Lindy. When you start producing fruit in your own neighborhood? 
Guess when I'll start praying for your kids to be healed, saved, restored. Guess when I'll stop doing that? When you don't need me to do it anymore. That's when. Because guess who has the same ability to do it as I do? Guess. We do. I can't hear you. We do. Everybody within the sound of my voice has the same exact ability as I do. I am not that smart. Now, granted, I am extremely handsome. I am gorgeous beyond belief. I'll give you that. But I don't have any greater anointing on me than you do on you. You won't look as handsome doing it. But hey, they'll still be saved. What? Check? <laughs> I shouldn't say that? No, but I look pretty cute doing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't disagree with that. Listen, Linda. Nothing wrong with us. <laughs> listen, Linda. It's available for you to do. I'm going to give you a hint. When your car won't start, guess what I want you to start doing? Praying for it. Yep. Laying hands on it. Taking authority over that. Whatever came with it. If there's something, maybe maybe it's just the starter solenite. you got to change the starter solenite. But wonder if it's a spirit that attached itself to the car mm -hmm. based on the old owner's demonic um, entertainment. Wonder if something came against that vehicle. I buy clothes at the thrift store. Guess what I do over every garment I take out of that store? You pray over them and anoint them. So I anoint them with oil and pray over them. My shoes, right away. Yeah. I got these shoes right here from my nephew. Now, I love my nephew, but my nephew got some habits. That I don't want to develop. So he gave me these shoes. He said, Oh, you want them? They're a little bit too small for me. I said, Yes, I do. They fit me just about right. He said, You can have them. I didn't even put them on until I anointed them with oil and prayed for them because they're stuff that my nephew does that I don't want to start doing. And I don't want anything attached to me that's attached to him. And I'm not saying he's bad or there's anything wrong with him. I'm just saying there's some stuff he does I don't want to do. There's probably stuff that I do he don't want to do. And he would do the same thing with something I gave him. All right? You like that? You know what he did with the computer I gave him? Washed it. Put it in the, in the dishwasher and turn it on. A computer? I got Sally. <laughs> I got her, you guys. What? No, he just he just washed the hard drive. He just cleaned out all the stuff that was in there. Yeah. There was a bunch of Jennifer's wedding pictures in there. There was some stuff from, from another time and space. And so he, I, I got her with the, I put it in the dishwasher. <laughs> what? I'm funny. That's funny. Yeah. All right. So where are we at? Oh, Matthew, I am the salt, said that. I, have a, I am a personal witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. I am God's temple. Why? How are you God's temple? Who knows that? Because the Holy Spirit lives in you. So the Spirit of God lives in you, and in the temple where God used to dwell, He doesn't dwell there anymore. Since Jesus died, it was, the, the curtain was torn from the top down. The temple was completely destroyed in rubble, and then you, as a new believer, are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You are the temple of God. God Almighty Spirit lives inside of each and every one of us. And it's like there's a, there's, there's a portion of the Spirit that lives in me, a portion of it that lives in her. Actually, it's the fullness of the Spirit lives in her. The fullness of the Spirit lives in you. And as we come together as the body, that Spirit of God is manifested and begins to be empowered. And it starts to shake, rattle, and roll. And things begin to break off, fall down. Sick people begin to rise up. Dead people walk, talk. Sick people are healed. Financial Finances are restored. Uh, marriages and relationships are are, 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 ben, are are benefited. And if you haven't refinanced your house and consolidated your credit card debt and your car loans, you're just a damn fool. And if you don't have a website right now selling all that uh, antique uh, china and silverware and coins and stuff, you're just a damn fool because I've given you good counsel, and if you don't do it, it's not my fault. 
you're gonna you're gonna die and there's gonna be the same dust that was on there when your grandparents died and left you that stuff, that same dust is gonna be on there when you die and leave it to somebody else who ain't gonna do shit with it. Take good advice. It's free. You might as well take it. Remember people used to offer you a beer and you'd say, yeah, beer is some of the nastiest, pissiest, tape, nastiest crap in the world. And somebody would offer you one, yeah, yeah, I'll take the beer. I'm giving you some of the best financial information you can get and you don't even pay attention. Shame on you. Free advice that's actually going to earn you some money. You could go to Edward Jones and pay him $5,000 for that information. All right. I am God's co-worker. I am sealed with Christ in the heavenly realm. I am sealed with Christ. I'm with Christ in the heavenly realms, according to Ephesians 2.6. I am God's workmanship. I'm the completed, finished work of Jesus Christ by God Almighty. I, am, I, I may approach God with freedom and confidence. A lot of people approach God uh, crawling on the floor and crying and rolling around and shaking and, and crying and snotting up the carpet. I don't. I walk, I walk straight up to the throne of God and look, in, and look straight up at the heavens and, and make a bold comment and statement. God, I'm here on behalf of, I'm going to make up a name, Charles, and I'm, 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 and I'm interceding for him on behalf of his, uh, whatever is going on in his life. And God, I want you to manifest real uh, in, in real time in Charles's life so that he can call on your name and he can have a personal relationship with you based on this calamity that he's going through. And guess what God does? Shows up. He shows up. He shows up if he's not at Lindy's house. <laughs> Evidently, God spends a lot of time at Lindy's house putting refrigerators in the hole and picking up uh, debris and, and cleaning out the refrigerator and stuff. But God, is, he, he's fast. He get done with that real quick and he can come and show up in your life too. <laughs> From what I understand, he's been spending some time down at down at Bambi's house too. Yeah, he's been hanging out there lately too. Yeah, what's going on with that? I can't I never know. get, nobody helps me shovel this. Well, you help me shovel this side wall. <laughs> Say, I may approach God with freedom and confidence. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That is a very... Important, powerful statement. I can do some things, I can do most things, or I can do all things. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Then somebody always asks me, well then why don't you have a million dollars? Guess what I don't want? A million dollars. I never even, it's never even dawned on me to go to the throne room of God to ask for a million dollars. You know what I always do? I ask God for enough for me and the people that I know that are in need. And my son told me one time, he was in the music business, he said, Dad, the reason why I don't want to sign a contract is because I'm afraid of what I would do with all that money. He was 15 years old, I think, when he said that. But I didn't get it right then. But then I thought about it, and I started watching people that had signed contracts, and they got bonuses and record deals, and then pretty soon, they had their face in a baggie, and they had uh, uh, whatever. They were doing bad news. All right. Where am I at, F? F. Hey. The dung gate. The dung, dung, dung gate. <laughs> to the rest of us, that's a shit gate. Doo-doo. Doo-doo, poo-poo, crap, shit, dung. <laughs> I don't know why everybody trips over my language. Pastor Tribble told me today that I that he didn't understand why I would I would swear. Of all the things he doesn't understand that I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Of all the things Pastor Tribble could wonder and be in deep thought and meditate on wonder why Pastor Danny, I wonder why Pastor Danny, I wonder why, why, why Bishop Danny says swear words. I wonder why. You know what he did never wonder? He never wondered why I gave homeless people homes. He never wondered why 
I give him money every time I see him. He never wondered why I give money to ministries to help them facilitate their call. He never one time asked me, why do you give away vehicles to young pastors that don't have cars? He never one time said, he never one time said, Pastor Danny, I wonder why you give away them Cadillacs. He never said that. Guess what he wonders? <laughs> why you say it, couple? Why I say shit, damn in hell? And none of those are swear words, anyways. Really, they're just not. But uh, but I mean, even even if they are, let's call them let's call them let's call them swear words. Okay. Let's say they are. Let's just pretend. Okay. He, He's wondering why you say them. Yeah. Out of all that. Out of uh, yeah. One wonder why Sally went to the Minnesota River and dunked seven times. Wonder why Jesus spit on a man's tongue. Wonder why Jesus spit on the earth and made mud and packed it in a man's eyes. I wonder why Jesus made a whip and drove out the money changers. People wonder about the weirdest, funniest things to me. Wonder why Danny is singing, singing so loud in church. You want to know why I sing so loud in church? Do you think that I like to sing, first of all? No. Do you think I like the sound of my voice? Mm. Do you think <laughs> I think other people like the sound of my voice? Do you think for one second I'm trying to audition for the worship team? Guess why I sing loud in church? Because it encourages other men yes. to express themselves in worship. You it, like apples? It moves them to sing out. When I say hoorah, I can hear women, little kids, and men go hoorah. It motivates people to come out of their comfort zone, or, or really it's not even a comfort zone. To, to wake up. To wake up, to come out of their shame and condemnation and go bold before the throne of God and worship. And if your worship leader is not creating an environment for them to do that, like, what was that guy's name that led worship the other day and says, let me hear your voices? John. If your worship leader's name is not John, and he is not calling out from the microphone, I want to hear you say Jesus, if, he, if that's not what's happening, there's nothing wrong with the microphone, there's nothing wrong with the sound system, there's nothing wrong with the earbuds, there's nothing wrong with the worshipers. There's something wrong with the worship leader. Raise a hallelujah. She keeps saying that. Right? Raise a hallelujah. All right, I'm on it, yeah? Yeah. All right, Dung Gate. I already did that. That gate, this gate led to the Valley of Him, and another valley, which I can't pronounce. It means habitation of demons. So the Dung Gate actually led to a valley called a habitation of demons. Unconfessed sin can become habitation for demons. Listen, listen, listen careful. I'm almost done with this. This is some important stuff. I know I was kidding around with the worship music and singing and stuff. Don't listen. This right here is the, is the stuff you want to you gra gravitate to. Unconfessed sin can become a habitation. Everybody know what habitation is? A dwelling. For demons. So if you have unconfessed sin, you are a habitation for demons. So that means that if your if your porn life is excelling, if your if your uh, uh, um, a lying, idolatry, witchcraft, sorcery, fortification, if that if that is unconfessed sin, you are a resting vessel for demonic infiltration, and the Holy Spirit can protects you at, uh, upon a repentant, um, contrary heart. But if you open your eye gate, nose gate, ear gate, mouth gate, man part, woman part gate, and you open it for infiltration for the, for the demonic spirits, they have permission to live in, near, or around you. I'm of a belief, this is Danny Barnes, not D. Bishop or Pastor Danny. Danny Barnes is of a mindset that a demon cannot live in you when the Holy Spirit lives in you. So that means it's got to live, it's got to be near you, by you, on you, or around you. I don't believe it can live in you 
when the Holy Spirit is in you. I'm telling you, I can't prove that in the Bible right now. One day I will. All right. The daily, the daily, oh, daily, the garbage from the city would be carted out to the valley of the demons. If the garbage was not removed, it would stink and infect the city. Excuse me, with disease. We must keep short accounts with God. You know what a short account means? It's a short account of sin. 1 John, 1 John 1, 9. We clean the sin rubbish out by daily confessing to the Lord our sin and claiming the cleansing blood to wash us clean. Okay, this is another D. Bishop moment. I'm going to add something to this that I found works better for me. This is like the third time since I started this conversation that I've corrected the author. This would be one of them times. If we, if the garbage was not removed, it would stink. One, we clean the sin rubbish out by daily confessing to the Lord our sin. Guess what happens if you don't sin? You don't have to daily confess. You don't have to daily confess. I learned that. I learned that because I was daily confessing mega sins all the time. I was engaged and embarked upon a sin nature that still left me in sexual immorality, perversion, adultery, fortification, uh, um, arson. Um, some people say homicides. I didn't say it. Some people say homicides. It says we can clean the, we can clean the sin rubbish out by daily confessing. To the Lord. You don't have to confess daily something that you don't do. Don't sin. You don't got to confess. Guess what else I learned? This is another one of the things that you want to re, re, um, watch this again and write this down. Once you're not confessing daily sin, guess what you can do? Praise and worship. I found people that spend time praying for healing aren't praising and worshiping. I found people that are confessing sin repetitively aren't praising and worshiping. I found people that continue in their sin nature and hang on to their to their crap aren't worshiping and praising God. And it says that God himself inhabits the praise and the worship of his people. So if you are continuously saying, forgive me, Father, for I have sinned, you're not saying, thank you, Father, for your blessing. So there's a short, there's... You're short-stopping your blessing by continuing in repetitive sin confessing. Mm -hmm. I am not saying nothing bad about Dan. He's the author of the Spiritual Warfare Manual. I'm not. I'm just telling you my experience. I, if I clean the house, guess what I don't have to do later? Clean it again. Clean the house. If I, if I, if I brush my teeth, if I wipe my butt, it don't still smell like poo-poo. I cleaned it. I don't have to worry about it no more. It's done. It, it's done. What if the guy can tell you about a small fry and a big fry, talking about a mattress, Reverend Sally, I can use my bum and a wipe with the with people <laughs> understanding that if they if it's clean, they don't gotta keep cleaning it. Alrighty then. <laughs> yes you can. You don't run shit up in here. <laughs> You're beginning, you're beginning to make people think that you're in control. You're not in control. <laughs> you better ask somebody. Okay, she's got a little control. All right. Maybe a little influence. You got some influence. <laughs> so, if, I want you to get wrap your arms around this. If you're not continuing in sin nature, you don't have to continue in, continue in repenting. Now, the Bible says in 1 John... But if you, it says, those who are in Christ Jesus no longer sin. But if you do, by chance, happen to accidentally embark on a sin, you have an intercessor that sits at the right hand of the Father and intercedes on your behalf. It says, if you happen to, by chance, slip and fall and touch a dead body, you can go take yourself before the priest and do whatever they say to do to be clean. 
That was a joke for only me and Sally. We've been studying the Bible, and they got this this law of Moses to where if they happened to touch any dead body, that they had to go to the priest. I'm like, who in the hell? Remember that? Yeah. Who in the hell accidentally? That sounds like something that they would investigate. You know. <laughs> Oops! I touched another dead body. Oops! There I go again. <laughs> Don't, <laughs> don't get in, don't get involved in sin nature and you won't spend so much time repenting. And this is what I learned about my dad. All my brothers and sisters would be in trouble every time you walked home. Every time you walked in the door, everybody in the house would be in trouble. Except guess who? Guess who wasn't in trouble when my dad got home? Everybody would run and hide when they saw my dad's headlights coming up the driveway. Guess who didn't run and hide? You. Guess who wasn't in trouble when he walked in the door? You. Guess who sat with him and watched Gunsmoke and Rifleman and Bonanza and ate out of a half gallon of ice cream and drank dad's root beer with him? You. You know why? Because I knew what I was supposed to do and I did it. And when he came home, I wasn't scared of what he might do because I did what he said to do and I knew what he wanted me to do when I did it. I learned this before I got saved in dealing with my natural dad. I wanted to spend time with my dad. So he said the trash had better be emptied and the barn had better be clean when I get home. My chore was to make sure all the trash in the house was out and the barn, we had milk cows and it had them little um, cement things where the poop went down in there. And you had to shovel it out, put a real bear, take it out and dump it. The trough. Yeah, it's, I don't okay. call it a trough because I don't know the real name. I agree. I'm going to agree trough. Uh, but the, the bottom line is I knew. So he, he didn't even, he quit checking my job because he, I, it was always done. He got tired of going out to the barn with a flashlight to find out whether I did what I was supposed to do or not. I did what I was supposed to do, then I got to spend time with my dad. So I learned this as a born-again believer. If I do what God says to do, mm -hmm. guess what I don't spend time doing? Hiding and running from God. That's right. Guess what I don't do? I don't I don't spend time asking for me. Dad, I'm sorry. Father God, I'm sorry. I did it again. I didn't do that. So my dad would, would come home. He'd, he'd eat dinner. He'd clean up. And then he would sit in his reclining chair, about like that one right there, only it was brown. And 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 he would eat a half. He had a TV tray. He would oh, eat the whole half gallon. I don't know why he ate so much ice cream. He had a half gallon of ice cream, and then I would sit next to him, and he'd have bananas and gun smoke and a rifleman would come on TV. He loved westerns, and then he would take a bite of ice cream, and then he would take the spoon and give me a bite of ice cream. And then, take, and then he would take a drink out of his great big stupid dumbass mug of root beer. And then he would give me a drink out of the big dumbass stupid mug of root beer. And we would sit there and watch the stuff together. It was a good relationship that I had with my dad that the other kids didn't have with my dad. Because they were busy trying to figure out how not to do what he said to do. And I wanted to hurry up and do what he said to do first. Because I wanted to get the fun stuff with him that they never got to experience. The blessing. So I learned that even not saved, and he, Dylan learned it too. He wasn't stealing from his dad. He wasn't trying to lie to his dad. He was spending time eating ice cream with me. We played Nerf ball basketball. Well, I couldn't even get out of a hospital bed. I'd watch him play, play Nerf ball basketball. Anyways. It's up to you. Do what you want to do. If you do what you're supposed to do, you'll get what you're, what you're supposed to get. If you don't do what you're supposed to do, guess what? You'll get what you're supposed to get. Mm -hmm. Either way, you get what you're supposed to get. If you're supposed to get a whooping, you'll get a... Whooping. If you're, if you're supposed to get a blessing, you'll get a... Blessing. Either way, you're asking for what you yes. get. Does that make sense? Either way, you're asking for what you get. Do you want your wife to love you? Act lovable. 
Do you want your husband to honor you? Act honorable. Do, do you want your kids to, to, to cherish you? and Or kids, do you want your parents to cherish you? Act like someone should be, that someone, you're somebody that can be cherished. Cherish is the word I use. Okay, I'm not going to sing. <laughs> Who knows that song? I do. It's been a long time since I heard it. Yeah, I, I don't think I got the note, the melody right, but I'm going to get it before we leave. Right. Okay, ready? We're going on. The water gate. Go inside frequently to a solitary, a, solid, a did, solitary, is that the right word? Did we do the fountain gate? Did I? I don't think so. Okay, I'm going to do the fountain gate. Who are, let's see, the fountain gate. We are to be cleansed after we have walked in the world. We need to stop to wash our feet and to drink at the fountain of life. Nehemiah 3.13. The phone's binging. Everybody must have knew what you knew. Yeah. Did they? I don't know what it was. The fountain gate was built by Shalom, which means to restore. Jesus is our restorer. Be cleansed by drinking the pure water of the word of God. What is the pure water of the Word of God? Jesus. We drink living water from Jesus, who is our fountain of life. See, everybody thought that I was lying when I said Jesus. Reverend Sally wasn't even, she didn't think I was going to get that one right. <laughs> Psalms 38, I'm sorry, Psalms 36, 8 through 9. The residents of Jerusalem would come to wash their dusty hot feet at a fountain gate. Are you feeling dirty or polluted by the world? Go to the water of the word. Wash and be cleansed. Hebrews 10.22 So the, the fountain gate is also important. Wash yourself in the word. I'm going to tell you what I did to have the word written in my heart. I'm not a good reader, but I read every word that I could pronounce. And the words that I couldn't pronounce, I made up a word for it in its place. You don't like it? Mm -hmm. I don't really give a crap. Here's the other thing I used to do. I used to have cassettes that came in a folder that opened up like this, and it had all the books in the Bible on a cassette. And I listened to them until they wore out. And then, by the time they wore out, they came out with discs, CDs. And the whole Bible was on a CD. And I would listen for no reason at all, every chance I got, driving to job sites, crossing the country, uh, uh, in the bathroom, in, in the kitchen cooking, in the bedroom sleeping. I saturated myself with listening to the Word of God, saturating my mind, saturating my, in, in me and my spirit, just washing myself in the Word. Just literally, just washing myself in the word, and then, and then, recently, Reverend Sally and I made a covenant that we're going to do it again, and now it's on the phone. And so at night, uh, Reverend Sally turns on a phone, and she's got a speaker, and the word permeates. Per per is that yep. the right word? Yeah. Throughout the house, we fall. I fall asleep. She falls asleep. Ruby falls asleep. The word of God is being spoken. Through, all throughout the house. I used to listen to the radio at night, so it's no different. Now, right. Now it's right. I mean, it's different in, in what we're listening and what to. And you're, what, you, what, what you're washing yourself you're in. in. Yeah, you're not washing yourself in in in, uh, in uh, Beach Boys or the right. or Led Zeppelin or or Rare Earth and Savoy Brown or whatever. You're not. You, that's not what it is. That you know, I mean, that's in your brain. You're just running up, running up different lyrics, you know, rap music and 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 what the B word said and what my nigga said and blah blah. And, it, blah. and it's a living word, so it's just filling us all night long. Yeah. So yeah. that's what we're doing. That's what I've done since mm, 89, 90. I strongly suggest that you get an app on your phone and when you lay down to go to sleep or if you're cooking Try not to watch as much TV. <clears throat>
begin to wash yourself in the word of God. All right, it's called the fountain gate. The fountain gate was built, I already read that part, be cleansed by drinking the pure water. So you drink in the word of God. You drink in the water. We drink living water from Jesus, who is our fountain of life. Psalms 36. The residents of Jerusalem would come. Are you ready yet? The water gate. The water gate. Nope. So not water gate with President Nixon. <laughs> the other water gate. Water gate. Go aside frequently to solitary places. Go aside frequently to solitary places to be refreshed. Nehemiah 3, 15, 26. The water gate led to the king's garden and the Gideon spring. The king's garden was beautiful, lush garden by the quiet pool of Siloam where the king would come to enjoy solitude and restoration. The name Siloam means to send away. This same pool was where Jesus applied the clay to the blind man's eye and told him, to go wash in the pool. He obeyed. What did he do? Obeyed. He obeyed. He did. He Somebody obeyed. obeyed Jesus? Yep. Where is that? How does that work? You mean he said do it and they did it? It appears. It appears so. What kind of foolishness is that? He obeyed and came back seeing and, and washed in the pool. He obeyed and came back seeing. It is in the obedient, in the obedient, in the obedient, <clears throat> in the obedient <laughs> act of coming apart to the quiet, still waters of the Lord's presence that we will have our sight renewed and be fully restored. Jesus went away often to a solitary place to pray and be refreshed. Take time to study these passages and allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you. I'm going to tell you right now, Matthew, John, Mark, Mark, and Luke are all the same scripture with a different, with a, I mean, it's about the same thing. Psalms 22, 20. Really, a lot of people say that Jesus went off by himself a lot. Truth is, is that's not true at all. But the fact of the matter is, is he did go off to, commune, to communicate with the Father. And when he did, he came back refreshed. One of the only times that Jesus went off by himself is he was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness. And then a couple times he was led to a mountain. And then he went and spent time with, the, with God as he um, asked God if it would be possible to remove this cup from him. So I'm thinking literally there's between five and seven places in the Bible where Jesus went off by himself without anybody else to commune with Father. But that's not the point. The point is, is you want to have a quiet time, which Pastor Dave Carlson calls it a secret place. I'm going to Google that because I don't even know if there's such a thing as a secret place in the Bible. I think this is what he means. A, a place where it's just between you and God. Mm -hmm. It's a secret place that evidently you can step into it. Because not only does he teach there's a secret place, but you can step into it. Mm -hmm. So, Like going into a prayer closet, into a room alone. So it's a secret place. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to believe it. I'm going to believe it because I don't have anything to, to, to I, I don't find any fault with it. So if somebody tells me, go, go spend a long time with God, I'm not going to think automatically that that's a bad idea. Um, I know that when Jesus, um, he sent everybody out in twos. So there's some stuff that I doesn't really, I'm, I'm having trouble with. Why did he send everybody out in twos? Why did he say it's not good for man to be alone? Why was everybody who was tempted by the devil alone when they were tempted by the devil? You see what I'm saying? There's some stuff here. But I'm going to tell you because this is not my spiritual worker manual. And I'm standing down under... Pastor Dave Carlson. If Pastor Dave Carlson said there's a secret place, secret place that you can step into, I'm going to stand on it. I'm going to go with that. And Reverend Sally Clark has evidently found that secret place and spent time there. I know that every time in the Bible that people were by themselves and alone, that's where Satan came. It says that Jesus was led off in the wilderness 
and then Satan came to tempt him. And then Judas, when he was by himself, Satan entered into him. And then when Abraham was by himself, then came the uh, uh, demonic attack. And when Eve was alone in the garden, guess who came? Make sure that when you go to your secret place, or when you go spend time with God, that you're in communion with the Father. That's going to be my counsel in this particular area. When you go into your prayer closet, make sure you're communing with the Father. You and, and identify the voice that you're hearing. Test the Spirit. And then, and then I'm going to encourage you to do what this manual says to do. And I'm going to encourage you to do what Pastor Dave Carlson is going to say, says to do. Step into that place. and But make sure you're prayed up, repentant. And if you hear a voice that's not from God, cast it off. Take authority over it. Bind it and rebuke it. And make sure you're hearing from God. Is that good enough for everyone? Yeah, can we finish this top part just to I real quick? Three and four. All right, ready? The garden is for fellowship. God first met with Adam in the garden. Genesis 2, 8. 3.8. The king's garden inside the water gate represents a place of beauty and solitude. Our city or our life must have this quiet place where we meet our king. What? What? He's talking about a quiet place. Well, I already told you. This guy, this guy says it all the time. It says, Genesis... The king's garden inside the water gate represents a place of beautiful solitude. Our city, or our life, must have its quiet place where we meet our king. Jesus met his father in the garden on the Mount of Olives in the Garden of Gethsemane. And who was there with him? Who knows the answer to that? Who went into the garden with Jesus when he went into the garden by himself to meet with his father? Who was, who was there in that quiet place? Who was there with him? Because I was going to let this go because I'm a nice person. But now I'm going to beat it up. Who was in the garden when Jesus went to meet the Father? And did he take his disciples and tell them to stay awake and watch and pray when he went into the garden? Yep. So he told his disciples to come with him. And he told them to watch and pray. And then when he went into the garden, the, it's clear that the, that the enemy came against Jesus while he was alone with the with the father in the garden. So I'm so because because I'm I'm gonna be I'm trying to be nice about this, I'm and and I'm and I'm and I'm gonna make up my mind I'm gonna be. So here's what I want you to do. Have a place that you go that is ded dedicated to spending time with the Father. Anoint that place with oil, sanctify that place, make sure that place is don't don't get don't get caught slipping, because I think it's important for me to protect you from a demonic attack. And every time you're alone, 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 you come under an enemy attack. I'm just I'm just telling you what the Bible says. It's clear. You come under a demonic attack. So make sure you have a place like they have them. Um, they have they, they built an altar to the Lord. So I would suggest that you would have a prayer closet. Like what was that show we watched where the woman went into went into the war room. The war room. She had a place dedicated, set aside, a prayer room that she spent time with God. I would I would um, encourage that. I wouldn't encourage dr drifting along a riverbank someplace random out there with your mind uh, free of any thoughts because I know that you're always hearing from at least three voices. You're hearing from what you think. You're hearing from what God wants you to hear. And it's always a counterfeit voice that you're going to hear from. And because I always know that God, that Jesus sent people out in twos and he said it's not good for people to be alone, men to be alone. I've always said and done this uh, ministry, showed people and created oh, people be done, to be. Okay. All right. I just want ice water when you're done. 
All right, so um, number four. Oh, the garden is the garden is for fellowship. God first met with Adam in the garden, and then we know who else was in the garden with Eve. The king's garden inside the water gate represents the place of beautiful solitude, or your life must have this quiet place where we meet our king. Make sure you're meeting and fellowshipping with God. That's my counsel to you. And Jesus met his father in the garden on the Mount of Olives and the Garden of Gethsemane. Matthew 26, 23. The water get laid to the main water source for the city of Jerusalem. It was here where the scriptures were read publicly in an open arena. Nehemiah 8, 1, 5, 6, and 10. The word means to gush forth. We need to gather with other brothers and sisters to read and meditate on the word of God. The gathering together of the saints for the study of the word is like coming to a gushing spring to drink. When we take in the word, the joy of the Lord becomes our strength. We need, uh, we need to gather with other brothers and sisters to read and meditate on the Word of God, to gather together with the saints, for the study of the Word is like coming to a gushing spring to drink. When we take in the Word, the joy of the Lord becomes our strength. I think she said that's as far as I can go. So that's John 15, 7 and 11. So make sure of this. When you're meeting in your secret place or in your prayer closet, Make sure that that place has been dedicated to God. Make sure it's free from, you know, cast out any spirits. Make sure you're, because if I just counsel you to go off by yourself somewhere and just, and just, you, because most people don't have any idea who they're talking to. They don't have a clue. They don't even know how to test the spirits. I want you to be careful and comfortable and anxious for nothing. When you communicate with the Father, when you go to communicate with the Father, make sure that you have a short account of sin, you, you, you've repented for anything that you may have done, you ask for forgiveness, and make sure you forgive anyone else. Make sure you're a receptacle for the voice of God. Do you know how many people I know that fall under demonic attack? Because they thought that they were alone with God. It's why I spend time on this. It's not because I don't want you to spend a quiet place with God. No, it's not that at all. It's because most people come under demonic attack when they are <clears throat> isolated and alone. So make sure your spirit's right. Make sure your head's on straight. Make sure your heart's right with God. Make sure you've been in the Word of God. And whatever voice you hear, Run it through the Bible and see does it align with Scripture. If you hear something and you believe it's God, it'll align with His Word. Test the Spirit. Who do you say the Son of God is? Then, cross-reference whatever you heard with the Bible. God's voice will never contradict His Bible. Amen? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. Good night, and God bless you. Amen.